Hello, welcome everybody to Locked On Eye Racing. It is now we're at episode well, week three of 2004, season four. And I'm Wilco, and I'm joined by myself this week yet again. Uh, it's just easier this way, so I hope you're all enjoying it. Uh, shout out to John Van Ray, who is enjoying it. Uh, the V8 Vets uh, doing split four commentary, shouting it out every week. You're a legend. So let's get into what I've been up to for the last week. So that's week three. Uh, there's some content. It is mostly supercars, so B, bear with me. I'm uh, going to go a little bit of the content, and we're going to finish with my trip that I forgot to talk about last week, but I had that whole supercars rant that I went on. Uh, that took up all the time but we're going to talk about my trip down to next level racing hq for the beyond blue event that i did a couple of weeks ago now i'm going to talk about a few things there and and what i got out of it which was uh, some good stories and uh some time in some really good rigs but we'll get to that at the end uh and then we're going to preview bathurst 1000 this week which after this pretty much i'm going to record uh nothing but ramblings the next episode after this uh, but I freed up most of my afternoon and most of the week to sit on that rig uh, during the day and practice for the Bathurst 1000. So we're going to go through a little bit of that. Uh, but let's get into the fact that iRacing uh, week three saw me do no production cars this week because it was at Navara and I just couldn't get a good time to sit there and actually learn the track and and feel feel like I was going to even be competitive by the end. And, and the time I would have sunk into learning the track was just not going to be worth it. So I uh, was very limited on time. So I used that to focus on vets uh, last week uh, at Road Atlanta. Which if I ever if I'd never see Road Atlanta again, it'll be too soon. I am literally over it. But uh, we did about five supercars races there this week. But we'll get to that in a moment. But no production cars. No GT3 race uh, this week either. So last night, Timmy pulled out last minute. Buzzer was going to do some Bathurst practice. And I wanted to stream. My head wasn't there. But uh, I knew the Bar Boys were going to be doing the strength of field for the Australians on um, Monday night. And I'd use... I had all my practice done for Bat for Road Atlanta, so it wasn't going to be a stressful race. It was just going to be me sitting in and doing what I've been doing all week, basically. And we talked about the championship series last week. I didn't have a very good Tuesday night race. I let Jamie Tung get ahead of me. Um, we'll have a look at how far ahead of me he is in a sec. But uh, he, he got ahead of me. I didn't have a very good result, which we'll talk about in a moment. But... Um, I wanted to have a second crack at it. I, I'd had a good race on the Friday morning, which is the Americans' time slot, the strength of field they had, uh, and got some really good results out of that. However, it doesn't count towards the Australian server uh, points tally. So unfortunately, uh, it was all for naught, except for a good fun race and some really cool experience. So uh, that is why I decided to have a crack on Monday night at the, the supercars yet again instead of going down the route of the GT3. It was at Le Mans, not feeling the GT3 at the moment, but still enough that if, if Timmy had turned up and Buzz was keen, we, we would have done it still. So, uh, But that's okay. Let's go into what actually happened last week. So I'm looking at iRacing at the moment. I did the Tuesday night Road Atlanta. I did the Thursday Vets Road Atlanta. I did Friday morning, which is the American Thursday night, Road America in the supercars. I then backed it up on Monday for the strength of field. So that's four races I did at Road Atlanta in the supercars this week. I've also been doing a little bit of practice for round three of the vets at Oshkin, that one that I can't pronounce. And I just, I honestly cannot pronounce it. So we're not even going to go there, but it's round three for the vets. I've done a little bit of practice there. And we'll talk about that in a sec too, but uh, we went to Tuesday night, sorry, Strength of Field, our tune-up Tuesday, or as, as some people aren't allowed to mention their names, uh, because other people get jealous, uh, refer to it as, so shout out Roy Clark, you're a legend. Um, but the Bar Boys have been really helping me, so uh, Banner Alliance, uh, crazy bunch of cries, they've been very much aligned with Locked On Lads for a very long time, uh, Supercars is their speciality. And I've jumped in and, and they've helped me out a long, long way uh, 
in my journey in the supercar so shout out to them but um we did the race i jumped in i didn't feel hugely confident but i needed to get ready for thursday night for the vets because that's the focus and got myself in not too bad a position qualified eighth for the race and thought yeah, okay that's not too bad it's a, it's a second split we were a, a good car number so that was gonna help us out pretty well got into a battle for the first couple of laps and then came up along uh samuel wright i believe it was and um yeah samuel wright and <sighs> brett horse full hordes null ah, made a mistake going into the double right hander at the end and or coming up out of the up over the hill um going down the straight which led to the double right handers at the back of road Atlanta, and lost speed i came down the inside we were too wide i then was on the inside of the track and i completely lost my braking marker and thought oh what's going on here i don't want to overtake sam i just want to sit behind sam but i'm going faster than him into this corner i've missed the second right hander braking marker completely put on the brakes and unfortunately slid out wide and, and took him off track uh, sat there and waited for him to go past to you know redress the situation that i'd caused but uh, unfortunately stuffed his race up and then just knuckled down and continued on with the race we only got 5x in that so it was a pretty good effort after v8 vets round one we're sort of focusing on on x's at the moment to try and eliminate the black flag for you know going 17x in a race so that was the focus we got most of our x's in that little incident other than that 5x for the night we end up 11th overall and now i sat behind sam i wasn't going to overtake him for the rest of the race but he did make a mistake late late in the race and uh, i got a run and that was the end of it so uh, I, I took that position but um look it was a it was a wasn't my best race definitely wasn't my best race i felt super bad uh, i had to keep on telling myself that hey everyone makes mistakes afterwards and and all that kind of stuff and it was an honest mistake i didn't go out there to ruin anyone's race and i did my best to nullify the situation but um, my brain was going crazy after it but i don't usually i hate ru uh, ruining people's races that's why you'll see me and i'll talk about it later is um i just don't make passes i don't go for passes too often i prefer to pass people in the pits or something like that just so i don't ruin anyone's race but uh we end up 11th in um fairly solid field of cars so strength of field only being 1449 actually so that's not not the hugest but there were 25 cars in the split so that's pretty good we were car number 14 so we did go better than uh, our car number which is always good but qualified eighth so sort of missed opportunity there and um had three locked on cars in that race actually uh, jeremy bush joined us and uh, also buzz was in there as well um it was really good to see all the other locked on cars in there uh got a bit confusing though i think when a few people hit each other and there the was maybe some people were, were worried about the other locked on lads cars hitting them but there wasn't too much of that so it, it was fine uh but that was tuesday night you know it was it was a race that, that's I, I came out of it 53 points and i'm like yeah, that's probably not the best but anyway it's done uh did a little bit more practice uh, leading into the Thursday night bets race, which was it was shortened anyway. So I'd done a lot of practice for a 200k race, 50 laps. Pretty excited. Strategy was going to work. We're keeping tyres really good. Um, fuel saving, I, I practiced all that. We were pretty good. And then all of a sudden, maintenance and the race is only 150k, 37 laps, which it is what it is fine nothing you do about it so we or i went into the race practice i was in fifth fastest sixth fastest in practice really happy with the speed we got out of this car with all the effort i'd put in uh and then qualified and stuffed up the first lap and then was just super cautious the second lap and ended up coming 21st in quality out of 29 cars not ideal and especially when we are you know fifth and sixth fastest in practice that we were really putting in times that were and not wasn't that i was i'll talk about it later on, on how you can fudge hot laps and, and you can focus on hot laps and all that kind of stuff but 
weren't doing that. It was just me. Some of my fastest laps were at the back end of the thing where the tyres was should have been shot, especially around Road America, or Road Atlanta. Sorry, but um, put myself in a in a in a bad position, and then battled with people, got myself up to like thirteenth, fourteenth. Uh, as you do in vet split four, you have people going off and stuff like that. We we kept the car clean, and that was the main thing. Not too many X's, so that was a pretty good situation. And then the first safety car came out, and we went in and filled up. Now I haven't got my fuel strategy worked out anymore <laughs> when we're going into a whole new new race length, but it's just, that's just me. I put in too much fuel, so we covered enough fuel for the rest of the race at this stage. What I thought wasn't. It was. We had, we had fuel to the end of the race, so that that's the end of that. Uh, we're maybe splashing four, four or five liters, but it's not enough to cover the tires. You you should change when you do it again. So the the pit stop, um, the safety car came at a pretty good spot. It was sort of you know towards the end of the first in anyway, and it was only a couple laps short of that. We we going to then. Um, halfway we can fill up it's a bit, a bit under halfway it was, it was a good spot for a safety car towards the end this put us back into a i think because i put in so much fuel it dropped us back to about 17th or something like that and and restart i realized that why not just get the second pit stop out of the way I, i'm struggling to get past people that's my problem especially coming onto the back main straight which is your overtaking zone i couldn't get the purchase i needed off that that corner to to get what I wanted, which the next day I worked out what I was doing wrong. I was just going in too hot um, and not getting on the throttle early enough, which just totally changed everything. And, and we'll do that with the next race, but um, couldn't get the passes that I wanted to get done. So I wasn't coming back through the field. So we're getting held up. So, and last lap of the safety car, we're about to restart and I dive into the pits again, just to get the second one out of the way. I know my tires are going to last. It's not a problem. This way I can overtake people and not get tangled up. And, uh, should have done that lap before, so I could have then got it back onto the tail and had my two compulsory pit stops done. Restarted would have been in the best position possible. That's my mistake. Anyway, the second mistake of the night. But anyway, we get out. I just start lapping. I'm lapping better than all bar five cars on track at this stage. The Delta's looking really good. We can start seeing cars at the end of the straight, so we're starting to catch up to people already about four or five laps into the stint, and then second safety car comes and we cars on roof big crash it was crazy but um safety car everyone starts pitting again doing their second stop we jump up to 11th so we're 21st to 11th good strategies got us there clean driving great things are looking really good i know i'm faster than the two or three people ahead of me after that it's sort of hit and miss depending on tires laps and and clean driving uh, but that's top 10 that's that's what we want. We had we had the eighth last week. We should have had the eighth last round. We we threw that away with the incident points, but um twenty first or top ten, I was gonna be super happy with that. But the old ego got, got behind and we came out of that I wasn't getting the purchase out of that last the corner of the main straight. I got Tim Hall in front of me and I'm like, here we go. I can get onto him. He's he's definitely I'm I'm coasting through most of the corners because I just can't get run and i'm going too fast to hit i don't want to hit the guy so i'm just sort of you know coasting around a lot of the corners i'm definitely slower than i should be i can see the car in front of him i can get in front of that car as well uh i think it was ross watson who i'd beaten i think um on the tuesday night so i'm just wanting to get up to these guys and, and start battling it and getting to that sort of six a uh, seventh eighth position where I, where i felt i should be and was happy with and come out of that last corner onto the main, onto the back straight and just put the foot down a little too early, got a little bit too eager because my ego went, I can get this, let's nail it. And um, when you put your foot down too hard in a supercar, it doesn't go the direction you want um, unless you've got it aimed perfectly. And I did not because I was still turning, coming onto the main straight and tail flipped out and that's the end of it. I did a little, little flick spin again, I only lost two positions. I think it was back to 13th and... Um, but lost a lot of time and track position. So, you know, then, then lapping behind a group, which included, I think, Shane Patterson and a couple others. And we sort of had a really good battle there. It was behind Anita and um, showed the nose to her at turn one, which put her off a little bit and um, she went wide at turn one and, and got that position. Maybe just made a mistake. I don't know. In my, in my brain, that's what happened. I, I, I went to dive, but I didn't 
showed the nose. Um, you know, battled away a few hard, a few bits and pieces, and then realised without even knowing, two laps to go. Oh, I've, I've wasted all this time behind these cars. This, that's the end of that. Uh, Pato makes a mistake. Um, turn one, I think it is, or maybe even coming out of uh, coming down the hill into into the last turn and sort of backs everyone up. I, I think Pickering might have been in there as well. There was, there was a few people. We all tripped up over each other, and I couldn't. I hindsight dive down the inside of turn one. I clear them all. I get three three cars in one turn. No problems at all. What actually happened was I tried to stay wide because I didn't want to. Uh, I thought that's where the everyone was going to the inside, so I was going to go around the outside, um, which gets the inside then to turn two, and, and I could sneak through that way. Unfortunately. Shane stopped there. Carl's in front. I've had to basically balk all momentum, which has let, I think, Luke fly down the outside and get all of us. And in the end, I've Shane's got past me again anyway because I couldn't get the run up into the, the next section. So uh, I, I, I'd net lost a position out of that, unfortunately. And um, with other things happening up front, I was still in 13th with a basic lap to go. Uh, I then make another mistake coming on to the final turn with a lap and a half to go. Uh, just went wide and um, let another couple of cars pass, which uh, might have been the last lap actually, but either way it was, um, yeah, it was the last lap. So sort of one of those cars was a lap car, one wasn't, and um, battled with them. We end up going three wide with one ahead, so almost four wide across the start finish line. And uh, because they all got tangled up with each other, with slower cars and stuff, end up on the grass on the outside, on the grass, trying to get around the the person in front of me. But um, made for a good photo, but it wasn't a good finish. So um, we end up eight X's or something for the thing. Ended up thirteenth, uh, down from twenty first. So still up eight positions, but it was the opposite to last week. Round one, I was all like upbeat, excellent. This was a really good result, even though we got 20th um, and we should have had eight. It was still, I proved I was there and all that kind of stuff. Um, this one was a, what could have been, we gained eight spots. We went from 21 to 13th. So if you talk about it in that respect, it's a great race. We still got 13th out of 29. Like it's still a good result, but um, I came out of it feeling like I'd let myself down. So it was, you know, we had the pace and all that. there was just multiple bad decisions all compounded to the fact that I ended up 20, uh, sorry, uh, 13th where I should have felt like I was sort of eighth or, or ninth at least. But anyway, it is what it is. It's still a result. I moved on from that pretty quickly. And we went on to Friday morning where it was a public holiday in Melbourne. So a couple of the Banner boys decided, hey, cool, let's do the, um, the strength of field in America's. And um, I just happened to, everything lined up at work where I got home. And I told the kids, yeah, uh, just just do without me for an hour and a bit. And I'm going to race in the Americas, which we had 30 people rock up. And um, Road Atlanta, obviously, again. And it was a massive strength of field, 2,706. It was crazy. There's 30 cars in this thing. And some of the fastest drivers in, in the world in supercars were there. And uh, it was it was crazy. Like I was car, I was way down the field on car numbers. So I'm car number twenty five out of thirty in this field, and I'm sitting at just on at this stage sixteen hundred IRA rating. So you can see how strong the field is just by that. And I qualified sixteenth, and I'm like, oh, here we go. I'd worked out that final corner. I'd slow put more braking in and kicked around and had the accelerator on before the apex and, and was cruising out really well. So we were getting good time. So down to 16th out of the 30 field, which was, you know, massive strength of field. And we started racing and all of a sudden I'm not going backwards, which I thought I would because I thought I must have out, you know, had, had some slower people, behind, faster people behind me that didn't qualify well, but we're sort of holding position. I'm fighting for positions. I'm not giving up positions, which was another thing that I usually do when... I feel like someone's behind me. I'd prefer them in front of me rather than behind me so I can concentrate. But as soon as you let one guy pass you in, in a field like that, you've got four or five past you and that's, that's the end of it. So people are trying to dive at the end of straights and I'm, you know, holding my line and, and, and rubbing doors with them and, and forcing them to actually make the moves, which is, um, 
something that's very different. So that was good. We raced for the full, what is it, 32 lap race or 35, 35 lap race uh, for an official. And we did the pitch strategy. We got out of there and, and we jumped a few cars with that, which was really good. And had had a position almost in the top 10 at one stage. And a few of the cars that obviously got tangled up with some things got past me. But we end up 14th in a 30-car field that had that 2,700 I rating uh, return to the field, which was nuts. Pulled 92 championship points out of it the best i'd ever pulled out of this race uh, ever of any of the supercars races i uh, got like a massive bump of about 50 in the in i rating which was nuts as well it was just everything went well 7x and no real mistakes just felt smooth just kept on going uh battled for my positions made some overtakes on track which was really good and came out of it feeling like i'd I never want to see Road Lair again and prove myself out there and didn't need anything else to prove and then um, done really well. So that was the best I've ever felt in a supercar, which is, I'm saying that a lot because I am improving, which is, is really good. But then, oh, uh, look, so we, we do a little bit of practice for Vets Round 3. Uh, I've got my time down to a 125.5, which, yes, I manipulated that time. No, I don't do my times on um, hot lapping, uh, jumping in the pits, doing it again and doing it again, which I've noticed when you go through the records, a lot of guys are doing that. They're doing two laps, three laps since either wrecking the car, losing a run or um, whatever reason they jump out. I do full tank runs generally and uh, just to get familiar with the track and I'm not worried about that those fast times, but there's a few people that were doing low 125s and just even creeping into the 124s and a lot of people are in the 126s at this track which so i was 126 flat was a pretty good time for me at um i'm not even going to pronounce it or, or let's have a look at it motorsport let's see motorsport arena Orschleben. Orschleben? Orschleben. Anyway, um, we're there. So one minute 26 is, is where I feel, feel comfortable, but that's a whole stint. Tires, fuel, 50 laps. I can do that lap start to finish, no problems at all. Um, but I was doing some practice and I decided, let's get a time on the board. So with 20 litres left in the tank, I pulled in, got the fresh set of rubber and went out again, did 125.5 just to show that I can do it. And then... Um, it was a good feeling to be able to do that and know I'm at 1.4 seconds off the fastest guys in, in all, this, all the practice service, but I haven't checked it in the last couple of days, but it's been good to see the pace there. Like I said, I'm just concentrating on getting my line right at that track because you can get your line very wrong very quickly and it causes problems, but getting the line right so that I can drive, like I'm about to talk about in this next one, um, without having to worry about anything else. So we, we move then into the final race of the week, which just ended up being another supercars race at Road Atlanta. And um, we did that last night, final day of week three. Uh, we, we go into a race that is 29 strong. Yes, another 29 strong race. And I am car number 23 three in a 2,272 strength of field. Now I qualify pretty well and I still get 20th and, um, you know, we still round the corner there, had a, got a, got a good, good start. And then got sort of me and Jaden, uh, Jordan, Jordan, um, uh, Williams, who's actually running third in division five at the moment. Uh, got in a bit of battle with him. He got past me. I got back past him, then sort of didn't see each other for a bit because of a few issues that he, I, I assume he had somewhere in the race. And um, was chasing down both Brett, who we talked about before, and Jamie Dunn, uh, trying to catch them and got into a, a, a rhythm. And it was Scotty Rankin messaged me on the weekend and um, said, look, it's something I've been told before, I'd just forgotten. 
and it's it's a really good message for life and for racing look down the road don't look at the what's in right in front of you look down the road make sure you've got your eye on what's going down the road so you can be prepared for and get yourself in the right position that just naturally works when you're looking at the corner ahead you're already positioning your car for that corner um out of the corner you're going through where i feel like it, and he noticed that I, a lot of my stuff is like my life it's reacting to what's happening in the present not preparing myself for what's coming down the road and i got into a rhythm last night when i was doing that i was just driving and i wasn't concerned about anything else and i was just doing fine i was hitting my marks we made a pass at the end of the straight on jordan as well which was something we haven't been able to do we would we were really closing the gap on people through that final corner the, the chica final chicane and was doing it with ease to be honest and then uh keeping keeping up pace was, was not going to be really lapped by much if i was which is another thing out of friday's race chastity who's one of the fastest people i know i know there's lots of like i know there's heaps of people out there but when i drive regularly he's generally him and a few others are winning the races so Generally, he laps me, no problems at all. But he didn't lap me in this race on Friday morning, which was a huge effort for me, like a huge win for me anyway. So that felt vindicated by how much I'd come along because usually it's a mid-race, he's overtaking me. So that was a really big moment. But we're in a really good spot. We'd done, we're just about to do our pit stops. We'd run the long strategy this time just so I, because I had clean air, so I was just lapping. And I got myself confused. I came to the end of the straight and I've got my ride heights a little bit too high at the moment. So my steering wheel is not quite visible too well, which is good for the streams because you see more. It's not good for me because I sometimes find myself in the wrong gear. And at the end of the straight, I saw a little curve, which I thought was a three. I felt like I'd missed the gear going down. So I thought like I was in third still. So I dropped one gear to go down to second to, to start heading towards the apex to, and, and coming out the other side of the chicane. And I was actually in second and I just dropped the first, which locked up all the brakes and spun me around. And I felt terrible. Like it was a massive unforced error on my path, nothing else to blame but me. Anyway, flip it around. It's one thing to make a mistake. And as Scotty said in his message, Focus on, you see, he's off a new goal, move on, focus on that, put it in the past, which is what I'm trying to tell my kids at the moment about, about having issues and, and stuff like that. But it was, um, it was, I compounded the problem. I got stuck behind Peter Simons, who's someone who I used to battle with a lot for positions, but um, when we are around each other and both on our game we're, we're, we're probably pretty close in pace or we used to, we're still not as far away as look i lapped him i was a, i was a lap ahead of him at this stage in the race which is not fitting to where we are because it, i think it was fuel strategy and, and a few other things playing its part but we generally are around each other i found him in front of me and i then come around the final corner that's fine go into turn one He's got a blue flag. I don't have to push it. I'm going to pit soon anyway. But the car comes out of the pits behind me that's on my lap. So I'm not a lap down, but they're, they're a faster car. So I've decided to pull over at the top of the hill. Peter decides to pull over too, but Peter pulls the brakes on because it's that weird snaky section from the top of the hill down and he doesn't want to hit the apex. I think he's going to try and let me through. Either way, I didn't see it put on the slam on the brakes too late to eye punch Peter forward into the on the other side of the road doesn't kill anyone except for him um I spin myself out it, it's a it's a, it's only small touch but um yeah I, I just didn't see it coming and it's the lesson of just stay to your line and make someone else overtake you because I got off myself offline and I put myself in a position where I shouldn't have been and it, it caused me to spin and then not only spin but i was in the wrong spot had to reverse around lost a lot of time and ended my race so i come out of the pits 15 seconds ahead of the car behind 30 seconds behind the car in front there's nothing you can do then with like 15 laps to go 20, 12 laps to go except for, for race and um i'll just drive and that's what happened so we end up 20th started 20th finished 20th 
in a 30 or 29 strong field. Lost a little bit I rating, not much. Only got 45 championship points. And sort of finished Road Atlanta on a low, unfortunately. But uh, had, had the pace at the end. Really felt comfortable in the car for the first time. And, not for the first time, but the most comfortable in a car for a long time. But anyway, that's, that's my week in racing. And we're preparing now for what's ahead. So what's ahead is uh, we go to Bathurst tonight. Which I'm about to start practicing. Very big moment for me. Not a not a place that I'm um, confident at. I guess I've done the most laps there of any track in the world in any sim, and I'm still not confident there compared to any other track. It's just it means so much to me. A and B, it's so unforgiving. But we're going there tonight. We got Ashken Levenbin. That one. Uh, I know you're gonna love the pronunciations, but. Um, that's on Thursday night for Vets, and that's a 200k race. So looking forward to that. Just got to put in a bit more practice between now and then, but in a position where it's not the focus this week, but I'm definitely put in enough practice where I'll be able to hold my own. I've got to start enjoying the racing rather than getting stressed about that race in particular, the Vets one. I'm getting myself wound up where I just need to relax and just enjoy it. But... Um, yeah, and as John said, don't make the silly mistakes. Uh, that's the key to that split four. So we'll see how we go. But um, And then we head to Bathurst 1000 on Saturday, 1 p.m. Server opens, and me and Buzz will be ready for that. Nervous as hell, but excited to do it. So there'll be a heap of practice. Probably see a Friday night practice run from me as well. Um, bit of a cobwebs of the dust off and, and see how we go. But, yeah. Looking forward to that. But yeah, so two weeks ago, I think it was, um, headed down to the Gold Coast to raise money for, money for Beyond Blue yet again. And uh, Beyond the Screens, uh, Queensland Esports and Gaming uh, put on an event at Next Level HQ, which was really cool fun. Uh, my mate Jack Hutto invited me there and I went along and it was really good fun. It was four hours on the Gold Coast. It was about four hours of driving to and from because the traffic was a nightmare. School holidays up here. And went down there, felt massively out of my element because all these other people were streamers, confident in themselves, or that's what they portrayed they were. And um, I was someone who didn't feel like I should be there, uh, even though I was probably the most uh, qualified to be there. Uh, saw a few people I knew, ran into Andrew Gilliam again, and um, took me a long time to even, even say anything to him, but, ha but had a chat to him for a little bit, which was really good. Uh, watch back the replay and he's actually commentating on on some of my laps that I'm doing at that, that stage which was really good because he was actually saying I was driving pretty well but yeah spent a lot of time a teaching people what to do and and, and showing people how to how to use the sim in the in the cool rigs that they had there and then the place is beautiful like it's really well set up there's a there's a loft upstairs where they do all their behind the scenes stuff but they had what three rigs set up just in the front when you go in and then they had a fourth one three normal rigs the, the different levels uh of, of um the formula one style and a few different the the better better rigs and then they had the motion rig set up next to all of all three of these and it was it had uh dirt uh so the rally car game on it dirt two or dirt three or dirt four which i don't know which one it was but it, it was it was hooked up on it and then they had a big stage area. Uh, well, they had a big white wall, and um, that was where they're doing their interviews and stuff like that. And then they had a massive four monitor set up for the the streaming of the whole thing, and it was pretty impressive to see what they were doing to set it up and you know have all the different things on screen at one time. So me being a person who's does done it all myself, uh, just seeing the the level of stuff that they were able to do there was was really impressive. Uh, the kit's really good, and I came back. I'd been on the Moser wheel, I think it was, and um, I came back and I was racing in the V8 afterwards back in my rig, and I'm like, I've lost force feedback in this machine. What's going on? But it was because I'd been battling three, two or three hours of driving uh, in their thing, and their force feedback was turned the hell up as far as it can go, I reckon, and um, I'd battle with this car around Bathurst in a GT3 and um, 
yeah, got back here and I'm like, oh, these force feedback settings are set right back on my machine. So it was a, it was a godsend, but it was really impressive place and uh, they, they've got some really good kit and they were, they definitely won over all the other streamers that were there weren't iRacing streamers. So uh, most of them never dropped in a sim before, but by the end of it, they're all loving it. And that was, it was good to see the passion that I've enjoyed for the last five years and, you know, dabbled with for, for over multiple decades. But um, to see these people get in it for the first time and really love it and walk away thinking this is something that I could definitely get right into. And they gave them the worst combination of car and track possible. But, yeah, it's the most iconic, almost the most iconic. GT3 in, at Bathurst, great for viewing. Terrible for people who've never used a sim before in their life. So uh, that was interesting, but um, I got down to a two, optimal was a two five flat, which wasn't far off Andrew's time. Um, I, I physically did a two six flat. I just couldn't quite string it together uh, with the right combination of tires and, and fuel. And um, I think Andrew did a two three nine or two three eight. He was, he was flying around, but uh, had the, Everyone else was doing like two tens, two twelves, struggling to even get a lap in because they did. They had damage turned on as well, which is the other problem. So people were were a getting black flags as they're leaving the pits, not knowing why. Uh, they were then crashing their car at turn two, turn three, turn four, turn five, and having to reset or drive on with a broken car and go, "What's going on? Why am I so slow?" So I had to teach people how to reset their car, uh, which was interesting, but. Um, it was it was good seeing you know two tens two twelves they, they're really excited i hadn't jumped in the rig yet and then i sort of jumped in and they're like oh you've done this before i'm like yeah just a few times so um they had the guy who was running it from queensland esports come over and ask my name because all of a sudden they had they had someone to sh they were showing someone who, who had pace and uh commentating over it so that was pretty cool and then yeah whenever i jumped in the rig later on it was good i could you know it was just good fun and it was good to be able to do stuff like that in person which was really good and um next levels offered any of the people that were there or, or any content creators i think you can um if you want to book in a session there and and create content from the facility it's, it's built for that so there is that option uh out there so bonnie a legend uh been emailing her back and forth and um yeah it's good so Caleb Hydes is the is one of the drivers that they were talking about a bit. He, I think he jumped in remotely to the server from his rig and, and did a few laps there. There was a couple of others that were remotely jumping in, but he was their main one. Uh, they've got another person who streams daily from there as well. It's just a really nice setup, and um, but it's just too far away for me to be able to do anything with. But um, really nice place. The motion sim was amazing, absolutely amazing. So it was... Watching people jump in it and doing it without headphones, I'm like, what? 50, 60% of my driving's through my ears rather than anything else. And they're doing it without headphones. I'm like, why? Why? Why not use everything? They just obviously wanted to talk to people as they were doing it and stuff like that. But it had the, the stick shift and it had the handbrake. It was fully kitted out with everything you could want. This was their high end machine, big screen. And um, everyone's struggling, not quite drifting the car properly. And I jumped in, handbrake, let her go rip. And a lot of people were revving too high. But once you get in the right gear, she felt really good. But a lot of people were just going, they weren't hearing the, the engine screaming at them and saying, hey, give me another gear. They weren't changing gears. But as soon as I jumped in, changed gears, I did a, uh, what was it? We didn't quite qualify because I, it was a, a time you had to beat to go to the next stage no one was going close to it but um i hit to uh, you know in colin mccray or what was i call it colin mccray because that's where it started but dirt um if you're going around a corner too tight you hit a tire wall it stops you dead so you got to reverse out did that twice through the three laps and of a track i had no idea where it was or never done it before but um was it was that 20 seconds off the over a three and a half minute run 20 seconds off the thing with those two mistakes i think we did pretty well and the motion i didn't feel like you you're looking at it and it looks violent but when you're in it i don't know whether it was my driving style versus their driving style but it just felt smooth and it felt felt really good so um i'm not saying go buy one because they're expensive 
but it was definitely a really good feeling and then definitely um an experience i loved so if i do get down there again that's the first thing I'll, i want to jump in so anyway that was my experience there i'll i'm going to talk about it in my next podcast i do in a sec which is nothing but ramblings but um imposter syndrome there was huge didn't introduce myself to anyone didn't feel like i was meant to be there or anything like that but like that that's my other podcast which i'll talk about in a sec but I just want to mainly talk about next level racing their setup that they've got and the experience they had there. We didn't raise enough money. Like we wanted to raise twenty thousand for the event. We only think we got about four and a half, five thousand. But um I think overall they've they've done really well. They've extended the campaign into it finishes yesterday, I think, so at the end of September, but um mainly raising awareness for mental health in gaming that's the main thing it was about for me not raising money because i know everyone's struggling for money at the moment if i'm struggling for money i know everyone out there is struggling for money so um it was really good just to see the awareness raised around aussie gamers and mental health and and the battles that they they struggle with so hopefully it comes back for another time next year and we can do some more stuff around it but um it was a good event so that is this week like i said um bathurst 1000 big recap coming up i'll try and sit down buzzer and we'll have a have a one-on-one uh chat about it if we do okay if it's just me crashing out in the first couple laps then we probably won't talk about it ever again but um if you are hearing this and you do have any time spare between sort of one and nine o'clock on saturday 1 p.m and 9 p.m on saturday drop past the stream give us a give us a shout out uh it's all about raising views and hours watched on my stream not we're raising we're not raising money we're not raising i'm happy to raise awareness around mental health that's fine i'm happy to raise awareness about all the cancer stuff we've, we've done in the past and the shipbox rally and, and things like that which J Max about to go on one so you're going to get content on that eventually soon as well but um it's mainly about getting these youtube hours up if we can get that up above a certain amount we're well on our way to getting that that monetized and like i just said any anyone any way anyone can tap into some extra money at the moment is is massively appreciated so time watched is all i need from you guys if you can drop by share the stream like the stream all that kind of stuff that is that's all i need from anyone but uh one to nine one to eight yeah probably one to nine once we get quality and all that kind of stuff into it um somewhere in that period on saturday We'll be streaming all day. But anyway, that is this week's podcast. I uh, hope you're enjoying it. Ooh, comment at me somewhere. We've got a new email address, lockedonlads at gmail.com because it's free and the other one's not. So um, hit us up if you've got anything. Uh, hit us up on the socials. Just comment on this video if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're listening on the RSS feed, head over to Locked On Lads TV on youtube uh and, and give us a sub or anything like that over there that'd be great just watch a few videos leave it on in the background uh let your kids just stare at me racing really badly on the screen i promise i don't swear too much but anyway until next week thank you everyone who is watching this and enjoying it and we will be back uh hopefully for week four recap bye